say, where is my shame when I call your name? So please don't set me free. I'm as heavy as can be. I will do you harm. I will break my arm. I'm a victim of your charms. I want to be dead. When I am, I'm in bed. I can be so mean. You can beat me. I would like to shame you. I would like to blame you just because of my love to you. And love itself is just as innocent as roses in May. I know no. Just as brief as a candle in the wind And it's greedy just like sin Alone but sane I am a love suicide Love itself is just as brief as a candle in the wind. It is pure white, just like sin.
Hello and welcome. Yeehaw! It's another Ooh. Halloween writing showcase of the year 2024. Yippee! Yippee! <laughs> Jaffa is here and um yeah, so our hearts go out to Caitlin, not because she's dead, that made it sound like she died for a second, um, <laughs> but because she was also unable to join us again this time, but you know what? That's going to be okay. Uh, this is going to be a smaller show this year, but I'm very excited. I think there are more short stories submitted than there were two-sentence horror stories, and short stories is my favorite category, so that's fine. I'm not mad. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, Jaffa's a vampire wearing a very cool, stylish outfit made by some cool guy. Off screen, yeah, I've got like so cool. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, that cool guy made the same outfit that I'm wearing too. Um, <laughs> yeah, some dude out there, some mystery guy who's just making <laughs> clothes for us all the time. <laughs> um, but anyway, we are here to share in the horror stories so as you guys know maybe this is partially for the youtube audience because occasionally i get people who are like what is this on youtube <laughs> i'm l my name is your compass rose and we uh i'm on stream i'm on twitch and i'm on youtube sometimes and this is jaffa and she's Hi. around wherever <laughs> she wants to be <laughs> and it's great but she's also on twitch and also youtube sometimes Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. You know, every once in a while you find yourself on YouTube and you're like, wow, what's happening? Um, <laughs> but anyway, we are here to read and celebrate horror writing and creative writing and things like that. And so we have... <laughs> yeah, I gotta find her YouTube <laughs> secret. Yeah, hunt it down. I think there's a link in the Discord if you look. I don't know where it is, though. <laughs> But um, Plus it should be the same name. But yeah, yeah, find it, <laughs> find it, find it down. Um, what was I saying? So yes, so today we have there will be several winners of the uh of the showcase. There will be a best in show for well, the best in show goes to the best short story. The there's gonna be a runner up to the best in show for the second best short story. There is a winner of the two sentence horror story, and there's a run up for the two sentence horror story. And Jaffa and I have also submitted our own stories, but we of course are not eligible for prizes. So if you uh, submitted something, you'll probably win. That's kind of the go to. And of course, and of course, the sticker prizes for every um contestant have come in so this is the one that says your compass rose halloween writing showcase 2024 and this is the one of the options you get art done by the wonderful jaffa she drew a picture of me <laughs> <laughs> and if you want other options we also have this space girl from last year and the bard so there's a lot of sticker options if you wrote a story please fill out the google form so you can get your stickers and other prizes can i please win a new car i am so sorry a car is not an option <laughs> also i'm not drinking water i'm a vampire so i'm drinking blood drinking blood water <laughs> um <laughs> Also, I wanted to show the prizes that our winners are gonna get. So the top winner can get something from the merch store. They can pick anything out of the merch store. Here's all the items we have available. Bunch of shirts, bunch of artwork, things like that. Um, the other prizes are limited to any mug or any tote bag. And so there's a lot on the store. So those are all available for the winners and if you don't want to win you didn't want to write a story that's okay they are all available for purchase as well but like why not get one for free because <laughs> that is cooler um anyway oops boop 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 clicking on the wrong thing okay there we go anyway let's get into it so we have we're gonna start we're gonna split it up into three sections. The first section, we're gonna do some short stories. We're gonna do, take a little break. 
we're gonna do two sentence horror stories and then we're gonna come back and do the last part of the short stories and then we'll pick a winner and it'll be great so the first short story of the showcase in our year 2024 is entitled alone by mercury mercury yay and i will be reading this one i have it pulled up don't even question me okay <laughs> i am prepared <laughs> And of course, if you are reading, or if you're watching and listening, you and you prefer to see it in text and you don't want to like hear me say it, all of these are available on the Discord um, via PDF. So you can join the Discord and look it up too. So there you go. Anyway, this is Alone by Mercury Mercury. Crash. I open my eyes to the taste of blood in my mouth. I spit, I spit out on the floor to see the thick mixture of blood and spit. Looking up, I see my hammock. I've fallen. Spell jammers are a smooth ride. I close my eyes to open space. Why would there be anyone to cause us? What? Why would there be anyone to cause us, cause us to stop so suddenly? Let me wash my mouth out and figure out what's happening. It's quiet though. No commotion. Why? We just jolted to a stop. Surely someone has something to say. Where are my crewmates? The room is usually full. When I get above deck, I'm sure I'll know what's going on. Still no one. It's silent. Let me yell out. They must be playing a joke on me. Those scoundrels. They are trying to get me worked up. Ha! Still no response? Jossa? Kembor? Gorlgeb? No answer. Okay, this isn't funny anymore. I'm sick of the joke. Guys? Singebeard? Gregor? No. I've checked everywhere. No one is here. No captain? No first mate? I'm alone? I'm alone. No, what happened? Where are they? Were we attacked? No one woke me up. I could have helped. I could have saved them. I could have done something. I could not have been alone. No. Wait. There are no signs of a fight. No blood other than mine. I heard no yells, no screams, no panic. What happened? What did I do now? Where did they go? What about me? What do I do now? Do I wait to suffocate? Do I starve myself first? Do I take this dagger and end it first? What if... What, what if what happened to them happens to me? No one is going to save me. How could they? This is the astral plane. No one will come across this one spot. What was that? Is someone there? Was that sound? Hello? No. No one was there. I swore I saw something. I swore I saw someone. I must be imagining things. I'm alone after all, right? Maybe I'll just look one last dot 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 the end <laughs> yay yay good story i like it i think it's fun yeah Woo. what could have possibly happened what Maybe could he have was happened? alone from the beginning <laughs> was he ever not alone the real question <laughs> <laughs> all right i mean lots of water to be drunk <laughs> We had a full panic here, you know. <laughs> uh, that's how it works. It's fun and stressful to have your reading read out loud by someone who isn't you. Because when you make yeah. a mistake and you read it, you'll just say it out loud the right way. That's how I do it. <laughs> uh, anyway, the next story for our showcase is entitled New Employee by... None other than friend of the pod, brother in Heidelin, Arfie. I want to say a last name, but I don't have a last name, so it's just Arfie. <laughs> like, two. Um, <laughs> yeah. He it has a last name, but it's, uh. Like, he has an RP last name. He has an RP last name? That's good. Yeah, but it's L Y, and I don't know how you're supposed to say it. Oh, that, yeah. So. <laughs> like Arfie Lee or Lai or something. Arfie Barfie. <laughs> Arfi Barbie, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. and Jaffa is going to be taking it away for us, so go ahead. Woohoo! So, Wonder Vision and Co. This is dated July 17th, 2021. Summary of these official documents are <laughs> This following document contains the chain of communications between two employees during the month of April 2021 to June of 2021 regarding a newly hired internal employee. 
Robaz. I don't know if I'm saying that right. You Does can say it however you want. <laughs> Robaz, IT technician who has been with the company for five years, and Ellen, office administrator with 12 years working with the company. Both employees are located in the Oregon Portland office in a suburban office complex consisting of multiple companies sharing the same building. The office has roughly 25 Wonder Vision & Co. employees. All communication is done through our internal texting communication app. Further inquiries will be made for communication outside of the app. For sake of documentation and privacy, only text referring to the erratic employee will be shown on this document. As of now, investigations are still being conducted with an estimated closing date around September of 2022. All communications have been forwarded to Wonder Vision & Co. Chief Compliance Officer and will be kept internal until a public statement has been made. And here are the message logs. Starting in April 16, 2021, at 7.20 a.m., Robez messages. Coming early today, looking at 8 a.m. is when I should arrive. Ellen responds, that early? Really going for that Vision Co. end of the year employee award, huh? Lol, sure am, says Roman. <laughs> if only that comes with a nice bonus. Could you remind me again of when the new guy's or IT orientation is? The one that filled our previous analyst position. Around 9. I already booked your one hour orientation in the North Conference Room. Okay, thanks. Next message log is at 10.32 a.m. Ellen starts. So how was the orientation? Guy seems pretty good. He seems enthusiastic for his role. I hope he's okay with the late shift. Also, he needs to cut his hair. It looks like a mess. <laughs> Ellen responds, Nice! Finally, they got someone to fill in. The previous analyst kind of left on the whim, so it was such a pain with all the rush on the job posting. Hope this guy sticks around. Lol, yeah. He seems pretty quiet. Just kind of smiles a lot when I talk to him. Nods his head and all that, but seems okay. He'll get the process around here, hopefully. Although, he does seem kind of fidgety, and his eyes are like a little bloodshot. Probably not getting enough sleep. Ellen responds, Our standards are really high around here. Smiley face. Only the best, lol. He seems to get along well with Madison, too. Yeah, Madison could help with someone staying as late as her. She always seems to be the last one to leave. Next message log is at 4.45pm. Ellen starts, Hey, were you in the North Conference Room this morning? Did you notice something weird? Robaz says, no, what up? There's some small black particles and stains, like all over the floor and the conference desk room. I don't think it's just dirt. Wait, what? I'm confused, lol. Do we have someone that filthy in there? Uh, you were the only one in there, man. It's Friday. No one books these rooms on Friday. Christ, I'll come over and take a look. Show it to Madison, too. Maybe she needs to be aware of how much of a mess this guy is. The next message log is... So it jumps from April to May 12th, 2021. This is a message sent at 9.46 a.m. Ellen starts. I'm getting tired. It keeps happening. The weird black stuff? Yes! Man, you're not the only one saying this to me. His desk was a mess when I went over and troubleshooted his computer. It was like a garbage dump. Also, his laptop somehow is hella dirty and all banged up. The guy had like 20 Outlook email windows in the background, plus 12 Excel windows on his screen. What the heck is going on with this guy? <laughs> Ellen asks, How is his desk? It's covered in this weird black crap and he littered his things everywhere. Also the smell, man. I can't describe it, but it's like spoiled meat or rotting eggs coming from his desk drawer. Did he seriously forget his lunch and left it sitting in there? IDK. I think everyone who sat near him is starting to notice this smell from him and started staying home instead. It's probably the reason why I'm seeing less people in the office. God, if only I could have a work from home schedule too. <laughs> I'll put in a job order for the building to get cleaned up. Okay, sounds good. I thought he might get a hint, but the guy just keeps nodding and smiling. He's Loki a nutcase. I also don't think he's doing a good job either with his job. Just the other day he had a long talk with his manager in a conference room near me. Man, don't even get me started. I had to do his job sometimes too because he couldn't seem to set up a team meeting or create a task form in our company portal. <sighs> Break for me to get my breath. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. <laughs> you got this. Okay. 
Reading so hard. <laughs> Reading. <laughs> Our jobs are difficult. <laughs> okay. Next log is another month later. These are from June 13th of 2021. These messages start at 10.56 a.m. Ellen starts, It's happening again with all the stains. This is driving me insane. Also, why has the office smelled so bad recently? I only counted like 12 people in the office today. Everyone seems to be working from home due to this terrible smell. Robaz replies, It's coming from that new guy's desk. Speaking of, have you been seeing Madison around? Uh, she hasn't come back since like a week ago. I'm not sure what happened to her. No text either. I think I'm gonna go take out that rotten food he has in his desk drawer. Hopefully I can find out where the guy keeps bringing these black stains in from. Working late today. Need to do a couple maintenance things on the server. I don't care if it's an invasion of privacy. I'll have a talk with him tomorrow too about all this crap. But we can't have this around here, especially when I have to come in every day. Okay, don't stay too late. That guy is creeping me out every day. Next logs are from the following day, June 14th, 2021, at 9 a.m. Ellen messages, Robaz, you alright? You look sick walking in this morning. Robaz does not respond. At 12.12 p.m., Ellen messages, Hey man, I just heard the announcement. What's going on? Why are you suddenly turning in your resignation? No response. At 12.30 p.m., she says, Hello? No response. The next day, June 15th, 2021. The message log starts at 1.21 a.m. And it's Robez saying, Ellen, if you're reading this before they shut my account down and possibly remove all our communication, I'm sorry for not talking to you at work. I wanted to get the hell out of there as soon as I could and you need to too. You need to too. <laughs> that new employee isn't right. After everyone left yesterday, or that, oh, that new employee or that thing isn't right after everyone left yesterday, something's clearly wrong with him. I went over and checked out the mess he made. The smell was foul, the black particles, now that I look closer, seem to be some kind of ash from charcoal. At 1.21, or 1.28 a.m., he continues, I regret opening that drawer. I shouldn't have opened that drawer. What I saw inside the drawer was dozens of our employee badges. I don't know how he got them. I don't know when he got those badges, but they're all partially covered in this black stain. The smell was so overwhelming that I gagged and almost puked. Frankly, a lot went through my mind, but before I could gather my thoughts, he was behind me. At 1.35 a.m., he continues messaging. I didn't remember much of what he said. I just wanted to get the hell out of there. He didn't seem too phased and just smiled and nodded. I couldn't help but notice his hand was black and Madison's badge was dangling on his right hand. Thinking about it, I didn't see Madison after 4 p.m. today. I was in a panic. The only thing I remember was hearing, see you tomorrow behind me. You might think I'm exaggerating, or crazy even, but I don't feel safe. I don't know. I haven't slept ever since that encounter. I feared someone might tap me on my shoulder, and bam, that'd be it that if I close my eyes, I wouldn't be able to open them again. I already contacted the authorities. They'll be in the office tomorrow, and the company should be on the case soon. I hope that guy gets locked up. I think I'll head back to Texas with my family. I already booked a flight. I don't care if the company complains about me leaving before my two weeks. I can't be here. Ellen, if you somehow read this by Monday, or hopefully whenever you wake up, please be safe and do not come into the office tomorrow. This concludes the communication line. Investigation is still ongoing. A total of 20 Wonder Vision employees have gone missing from the Portland office as of July 1st. Miss Ellen has since resigned from her position and moved on to a different company. Her location is unknown, but it is assumed she has transferred out of state since June 30th. The questioning yielded fruitless, as it seems Miss Ellen was rather focused on moving out of her apartment and was not able to cooperate with investigators. Much persuasion was made to have her stay, including severance pay and coverage for mental health therapy, but it did not sway her. Miss Ellen refused to be in the office during this time frame, with little employees heading into the office after police involvement, and Wonder Vision complied with her request. There was no sign of this new employee after June 15th. Additionally, Wonder Vision has no hiring record of this individual. All points lead to a failure to report from the Portland managing team. 
Unfortunately, no successful communication has been made with anyone in this team. All the team member badges were successfully removed from this new employee desk drawer. As for Robaz, police investigation confirmed his booking to Texas on June 15th at 8 a.m. However, according to the airline, Robaz never checked in. Robaz's employee badge was discovered among the dozen of employee badges recovered. All the badges were covered in this strange black stain. It is suspected to be gunpowder or charcoal, but it is still unknown so far. Further investigation will need to be made. The end. Wow. <laughs> I like it. Like, if you look at the text too, it looks very much like an incident report. Um, yeah, I was very impressed with how... Yeah, like, the, the formatting and style of the writing is very cool and interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, great story, RV! Thank you! Yeah, I was so, I was so sad when I was like, Robes didn't make it! Robes no. didn't make it! I know, he was like, girl, get out of there! No! Oh, <laughs> uh, that's a good story. Yeah, no, it does, it does feel kind of like the... But Bailey School Kids books, where it would always be like one of the teachers is a monster or something. <laughs> and yeah. then it would be like, yeah, great story. We're off strong. We're off strong. It's a good uh, time. Thanks for showing up. You can watch the VOD RP. You can see me read your story. Yeah, you can see Evelyn oh, reading. Eloquence. Not out of breath, no. not actually about to die at the end from lack of oxygen. This girl can read a phone book <laughs> out loud. <laughs> um, anyway, we're moving on to our third one, which is a for funsies. This is one that I have written, and I will be Yay. reading my own story. Um, so this one is entitled Dear Dreamer by Your Compass Rose. Okay, where is it though? <laughs> You're gonna laugh. Okay. <laughs> also, there is a content warning on this one um, for creepy imagery and like stalking, like stalking adjacent. It's not true stalking, but. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna try not to laugh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, I feel like this is funny. <clears throat> Rice is our feet. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, Plot, twist. <laughs> Plot twist. Plot <laughs> twist. Uh, <clears throat> gentle, gentle little seed, for you may be met within a dream. A dream of black, of malcontent, that you may wish to circumvent. The dream is sweet, a saccharine facade, but you, dear dreamer, understand the macabre. The light so bright and warming to the touch, you notice the heat becoming too much. Plentiful food already to eat, the mouthfuls of wonderful feasting and treats. And yet as you get closer to the limit astride, the feeling of emptiness only grows inside. Let that worry you not, for there is more to indulge. Let us gather in pastimes, friends, and secrets divulge. For there is a figure here, worry not for its name. All you need to know is that it is glad that you came. The party is moving around with a fervor, but you notice that the party can move no further. A quick look around and you notice the seams of the set you've been trapped in right here in your dreams. The celebration stops suddenly, room filling with dread. All eyes of the gathered stare or I missed a whole line. <laughs> this is just, um, a quick look around, you notice the seams of the set you've been trapped in right here in your dreams. The moment you put two and two in your head, the celebration stops, the room filling with dread. All eyes of the gather stare blankly beyond, as you, as though you were of something of no material bond. The figure you noticed moves with a grace, as though it had expected you notice its face. The face here in question was one of unrest, a series of tumultuous lines growing tight into test. The more that you study, the less you understand, and the feeling of discomfort and danger finds itself at hand. The figure approaches, growing more abstract with each pace, but you find you can't move, falling deeper into dark space. The molding creature reaches a hand out to touch, and you find yourself reeling to a reality you must, cr must clutch. You snap your eyes shut and try to think without falter. To open and find, you're in a bed, a day like no other. A relief rushes, th rushes through you, a breath of relief. The dream was only a thing of belief. Though the mindset is true and you take one more breath, you realize you still feel the cold touch of death. 
A dream is nothing but a thought come true, but sometimes your dreams have a way of following you. The hand on your shoulder, it comes from behind. You find yourself frozen in body and mind. The moldering stench fills your nostrils at once. The sapping of hope as you decide whether to confront. Is there a way to escape this unmarred? The only answer you have has been barred. It is here in your bed, a grip unrelenting, and all you can think is to be merely assenting. You feel it do with you as you will, your mind and soul taking leave of a body still. You're, you drift in a haze of nothing at all with you when you feel yourself coming to terms with a fall. You land on your feet, quick as a cat. You find yourself in a substance, viscous and matte. The substance creeps up to encase you in whole, and you find yourself struggling with all of your soul. It matters not, thoroughly trapped you've been. And just in that moment, everything leaves you like the wind. It matters not what you were or would be, taken you've been by the lost astral sea. The creature you'd seen marked your soul and, to and had come to claim it as though taking a stroll. You lay here defeated in an undying ditch, another tool gathered by that ancient dream lich. And that's the end. <laughs> that was gonna be a two sentence horror story. <laughs> wow. But then I was like, what if I just kept going? And then um, I wrote a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I like how it rhymed. It I very... also liked how it rhymed, even though that made it a little more <laughs> difficult to write. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So we are at a moment where we are going to take a quick break, a little breaky wakey. So I'm going to play the break music and. Um, We'll be back with the two sentence horror story. Look at all my treats. Look I at all of your treats. <laughs> Damn, my lamb. <laughs> I'm a vampire that drinks blood and eats treats. <laughs> what a what a character you've built for yourself. <laughs> I love it. That's accurate, though. <laughs> all right, team. We will be back um in a few minutes. Uh, hold tight. <laughs> hold the door. Among the fields of straw and stover Clocked in till the workday's over Time's a gentle stream Longer than it seems Patient is the night How I long to see her face now Her starry moonlit gaze now no, she's never late, still anxiously I wait, patient is the night. She's never late, still anxiously I wait, patient is the night.
myself far from your arms Now that I have I can hardly stand not to be near your sweet southern charms Send me a peach from old Georgia Down with a summer So I know you'll be mine I hope that you won't forget me Before my road leads back to you Though the winter may bring the whole world to its knees The spring shall return with its fruit Just send me, send me one little peach, just a sweet sunny peace. And we're unmuted and ready to go. Hello. Hello. Um. How did you have? Did you have a question? No, I was, oh, I, I was reviewing the two sentence stories very quickly, and I was like, Ed Greenwood, and then I was like, oh, <laughs> that video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I had to. That's the one I threw in there because I was just like, bro. <laughs> I last second. Anyway, welcome back. We are going to be reading the two sentence horror stories submitted this time. And in fact, there was only one. So <laughs> I just, there was one, but I also wrote four. So that's uh that's what's up. Anyway, Jaff was gonna start us off with the two sentence horror stories, and we're gonna do a quick back and forth. Yeah. So the first two sentence horror story and the only one to be submitted by not the judges is titled He Smiles by Mercury Mercury. Content warnings? None. A lovely dream I do depart as a cold sensation against my feet awakes me. As I sit up in bed wondering why I feel terror, I see him smiling in the dark with the shine of his metallic knife in hand. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, scary. Bum. <laughs> we need our soundboard. Yeah. What's the scary soundboard sound? There it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. This one, the next one is entitled Hunger, written by myself, and there's a mild content warning for a uh, body horror. So, <clears throat> A bite, a taste, the sensation of a delicious flavor on the tongue, interrupted by a sharp pain. The mouth fills with sharp object, objects, the delicious sensation becoming lost, and the realization dawns. What you fight against falling down your throat alongside the favored treat is the precious teeth you were using merely a moment ago. Teeth! Oh no. They fall out! My teeth! <laughs> All right, the next one is titled The End by L with no content warnings. Crunchy. The end of the <laughs> The end of the day heralds beholding oneself in a mirror, assessing, contemplating and considering. But when the eyes of the reflection no longer follow one's own and the color one had understood to be true had yellowed, the last fleeting thought is that this might be more than just the end of the day. Bum, bum, bum. Duh, duh, duh. 
<laughs> that one is that one like you're dying or <laughs> it's uh vague <laughs> no i was thinking like if your reflection starts like discoloring and becoming alive and you're like am i gonna mm. die <laughs> Yeah. Okay, I was like, are they getting trapped in a book or something? Like, they're yeah. turning yellow like a page? Yeah, I was thinking yellow like decay and like corpse-like. Uh... Yeah. But you know, they're both good. They're both spooky. <laughs> the next one that I have also written is entitled Knock Knock, and it does not have a content warning. Knock 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 comes from your window at night. Knock, 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 smash. Are you prepared for a fight? <laughs> I was on a rhyme That's scheme. Good. That one's so good. <laughs> it is! It's scary! Like, you hear a tapping and then you hear your window break? Scary. No, thank you. Yeah, and like, also I rhymes. thought it would all just- I thought it would be four knocks again, but you, you got me with the smash. I, I got like, you! Oh, <laughs> fucking English language, bro. How does it even work? <laughs> A person eating corn nuts. Oh, yeah, you're eating corn nuts and you're like, wait, is that my teeth or is that corn nuts? <laughs> that's scary. That's, that's a that's a horror movie. Fear. <laughs> Especially when my dad is like, yeah, I chipped my tooth eating chips. And I'm like, oh, no, is that going to happen to me? <laughs> Please, yeah. no. But oh, anyways, yeah. the next and final two sentence horror story is titled Flavor by L with no content warnings. Although there should be. There should be a content <laughs> warning, but it's really like, if you know, you know, kind of content yeah. warning. <laughs> okay. The story is as follows. <laughs> Tiefling, drow, and elf. Cinnamon, mushroom, and mint. What else does Ed Greenwood think of? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> it doesn't Certainly. say anything bad, but it implies a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Confused. Look at the D and D. Yeah, if you if you're on the Discord, go into the D and D um, <laughs> section, watch that video shared by Mercury, Mercury, and you'll understand everything. <laughs> and if you already know, you know Ed Greenwood. What's that guy thinking about? <laughs> anyway. Yes. Wait. Let's read Mercury's in formal story he submitted at, in the chat at the in very the start. In the chat? Okay, yeah. <laughs> it says, I was sitting in the silent empty room in peace. As I looked to my left, there he was, Ed Greenwood. <laughs> <laughs> all the horror about Ed Greenwood were all freaked out by that old Canadian man who be talking about breast milk too much. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alright. Um, you want to take another break? Or do you want to keep I mean, push through? Keep going. It's pretty yeah. quick, yeah. All right, so short stories continued. I will be taking on the next one, which I will read the title before I put it on the screen because it's so funny. Um, <laughs> so the title is Asterian's Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, written by Carfluke. <laughs> I'm so excited to read this. Let's go. <laughs> let's let's jump on into it. Okay. I mean, it has some content warnings that he put in the There was a content warning. Um let me it was let me pull it up really quick. I did not include it. <laughs> His content warning is this is the best thing you'll ever read, surely ruining all over other stories you'll ever read again. Also the themes of slavery and master slave abuse. <laughs> so, just snuck in there at the end. Ahem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here is Asterian's horrible, no good, very bad day. <sighs> Mere days after his transformation, Asterian roamed the dark streets of Baldur's Gate, burdened with his new master's first command, to secure him a fitting tribute. He had no idea how to proceed with his task. Only a week ago, he was servi serving as one of the city's magistrates, and now he was hunting prey in the very city he once served. Asterion drifted through the countless alleys of the gate, his mind a whirl of conflicted thought. On one hand, he was quite reluctant to end someone's life, but on the other, his entire being ached with hunger. 
His master had permitted it only permitted him only a single feeding upon his transformation, and he was forbidden to feed again until he completed his first task. Breaking from his cloud of thought, he noticed a lone figure shuffling down the alley ahead. It looked as if they were lost in trying to find their way home from the local tavern. Asterion decided that the sooner he got this over, the sooner he got over his own discomfort and brought back a tribute for his master, the sooner his unbearable yearning for nourishment would end. As he drew closer, a wave of irrational dread gripped him. There, on the wall, illuminating by a blaze, a flickering brazier, was a graffiti tag with a lowercase cross T. A lowercase T. <laughs> but like, it looks like a cross. Okay, a lowercase T. It's in a different font and it's bold. <laughs> The sight stopped him in his tracks. The simple symbol resembling a cross sent a jolt of holy terror through his undead veins. In disbelief, Asterion stared at the symbol. Could it be that his the simple letter now wielded such power over him? The image of a cross, however small and unintentional, seemed to burn into his psyche a cruel reminder of the holy damage it represented. He had once scoffed at such superstitions, but now they held a terrifying reality. I wrote it in Comic Sans. I can tell it's in Comic Sans. I didn't realize how much Comic Sans lowercase t is just cross. Now that I look at it next to Times New Roman. <laughs> uh, his prey, ob oblivious to his internal struggle, continued to stumble forward. Asterion shook his head, trying to dispel the irrational fear, but it clung to him like a shadow. Determined to complete his task, he pushed forward. Silently, he closed the distance between them, his, mov his movements swift and silent. With a quick, calculated strike, he subdued his prey, feeling a mix of relief and revulsion. The figure was now unconscious in his grasp. Asterion lifted the limp body and to carry it on his shoulder, his hunger momentarily overshadowed by his sense of accomplishment. With his master's prize in tow, Asterion glided through the alleys, his thoughts racing. His undead heart quickened with anticipation, knowing that soon his hunger would be sated. Back in his master's lair, Asterion presented his master, Casador with the tribute. Casador's eyes narrowed as he inspected the offering. Pathetic, he snarled, striking Asterion with a force that sent him sprawling. This is unworthy. The beating that followed was swift and brutal, each blow a reminder of his failure. Finally, Casador relented, a smirk playing on his lips. You may feed, but only on this, he said, tossing a rat at Asterion's feet. The vampire spawn's stomach churned in disgust, but hunger gnawed at him. He reluctantly sank his fangs into the vermin, the taste bitter and vile. Weakened and humiliated, Asterion retreated into his quarters into the, in the lair to momentarily escape his waking torment. He sought solace in the familiar comfort of his favorite books, hoping to lose himself in their stories. But as he opened the first volume, his eyes were... <laughs> I'm sorry. His eyes were assaulted by the T's, lowercase t, T's scattered throughout the text. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is so fucking funny. <clears throat> <clears throat> the sight of the tiny symbols felt like searing brands on his mind, each little cross inflicting a searing holy pain. The letters on the pages twisted and writhed, transforming into grotesque crosses in his mind. The agony was excruciating, making it impossible for him to focus. Asterion realized with growing horror that was once his refuge had now become a prison. The written word, once a source of solace, was now a new tormentor. He could no longer bear to read, as the presence of that cursed letter would forever haunt him. Every book, every letter, was a reminder of his curse. Asterion's mind, once a haven of ideas, was now a battleground of fear and dread, with the T as his relentless adversary. Asterion realized with growing horror that he would never be again never again be able to lose himself in the comfort of his cherished stories. Every book, every letter, was now a minefield of agony. The simple act of reading, once a pleasure, had become an unbearable ordeal. And so, the vampire spawn's journey began, shadowed by an unbearable curse and the heart-wrenching loss of one of his greatest joys. The curse of vampirism had not only enslaved him to an eternal hunger, but also stripped him of the simple pleasures that once brought him solace. His existence was now a constant battle against his own nature, a relentless torment that haunted his every waking moment. The end. Fuck you. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god. Okay, I've also had similar thoughts about um, like just vampire lore in general. 
whether the like what about the cross makes it is it intent yeah is it right? like <laughs> there's a lot of questions there i agree yeah when we were watching salem's lot like the characters have like a cross and so it, it hits the vampire and it works but then they're like they don't have a cross later and they're like uh a uh, popsicle stick cross does this work and it wasn't working <laughs> but they're like oh you need to like pray into it you need to believe that it's jesus <laughs> <laughs> once yeah. you did that then the popsicle stick cross worked but we're like what if any cross could you do that to anything that's cross shaped like a letter t <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said you intentionally planned it all to be in Comic Sans, but then you read the font rules, which I appreciate that you read the font rules. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I also kind of love that we have, like, a little bit of a fan fiction vibe going on with we had a spell jammer D&D story, and now we have a Baldur's Gate story for the showcase. It's good, and I love it. This is the year of fan fiction, guys. This is this is my year of fan fiction. <laughs> Your story is 100% canon. I didn't say it wasn't canon. I just said it was fan fiction because it's you. You didn't make up these characters. <laughs> I haven't seen Salem's Lot, but apparently these two have. Yeah, that's the movie I was referring to just now, because they made a remake recently. Oh. Uh, anyhow, that was Asterion's Horrible. No good, very bad day. Also, so sad, I love Asterion as a character, as I think literally everyone in the world knows at this point, and, um... Yeah, it's sad! Also, we had- we had him getting beaten in the story, <laughs> like, yeah, just- Yeah, like, <laughs> it's like, anyways, Kazuo <laughs> beats him. And now he can't read things. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Gosh, what a what a what a gem. <laughs> oh, hey hey hey! What up? Welcome to the showcase. Our next story is entitled "Backpacking," written by the one and only <laughs> Jaffa Podplex. So, punish Asterians integral to any heartwarming story. I mean, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> That's kind of his whole shtick is punished. <laughs> uh, and so we continue on. Boats against the current and all that. Okay. This, this is my story. Uh, I gotta read it now. I'll try not to die this time. <laughs> I, you know, take breaks if you need to. <sighs> okay. Inhale all the air. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> Backpacking. You find a notebook sitting on a graveyard's worn stone wall. You pick it up and start reading the entries. Entry 1, 20th of October. I'm going out treasure hunting. Well, some might describe it as grave robbing, but that's only a matter of different perspectives. Anyways, this particular outing was planned when I learned there's an old abandoned cemetery a few dozen miles into the woods near my rural hometown. Where the ruins now lay, there had been a small village consisting of a number of families and a hunting outpost. This village, founded sometime in the early 1800s, had been abandoned decades later along with the rest of the settlement for reasons unknown. Any surviving documentation on the sudden migration, which was mainly through informal letters between family members, did not mention the reason why everyone was leaving, only the urgency with which they had gone. Nonetheless, there's a cemetery there that is likely untouched and ripe for the picking, and I'll be the one to find it. Nice. For my, personal, yeah, for my personal outing, I've decided I'll hike out on foot due, the, due to the dense foliage, which means the entire trip there and back will necessitate camping for a few nights. This is fine, as camping and backpacking are hobbies of mine, and I have in fact spent some time camping in these woods before, although never in the direction of the old village due to the more difficult terrain and lack of a hiking trail. Still, the more difficult to get to, the better the finds for whoever did put in all that effort, right? <laughs> Considering the treasured remains I'll hopefully be returning with, I'll pack lightly and keep my supplies minimal. As such, I'm planning on only bringing a knife and a handgun for self-defense. I know handguns aren't the best weapon against large animals like bears, but lugging a rifle around isn't feasible, at least for this initial trip. If anything happens, whoever discovers this journal is free to call me a dumbass. I forgot the content warning is that there's swear words. <laughs> <laughs> there's swears in this. Uh-oh. Um, entry number two. 23rd of October. So a few days later. 
I set out on the expedition early this morning, and the hike through the woods today has gone well. It's been a while since I've been out backpacking, so I had forgotten how peaceful this is. The leaves are starting to fall in earnest this time of year, meaning the entire forest is covered in eye-catching colors. I took a break for lunch in a small clearing and listened to the relaxing babble of a small nearby creek. It's hard to connect the negative connotations of my intended task with the beauty of this hike, but I don't really care about moral implications anyways. Who's to say I can't have a nice hike and a nice rummage through a graveyard? Anyways, after lunch, I continued down the trail for a few hours longer before setting up a small camp. Tomorrow morning I should reach the point where I'll have to divert from the trail. Entry 3, 24th of October. Taking a short break to make sure I have my equipment in order before heading off the trail. I've got a, ca a map and a compass, and I'll be leaving markers as I go. It should only take one, maybe two days of hiking to reach the village ruins. Here's hoping I don't cross paths with any hungry bears, or people for that matter. Entry 4, 24th of October still. Lunch break, I've made good progress so far, but the hike is much more tiring than before. It sucks, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? I do think I've heard some animals nearby though. Somehow, every time I stop to listen, whatever I thought I heard is silent. Maybe it's my mind playing tricks on me? There's probably a part of me that's paranoid about being caught, even in such a secluded area. On all the regular hikes I've taken, on this trail in the past, I rarely encountered anyone else. That's small towns for you. It's fine, I'll be out of these woods soon enough. Entry 5, 24th of October still. Okay, setting up camp again. I was hoping to have reached the village by now, but it looks like the terrain slowed me down more than I was expecting it to. I at least haven't come across any of my markers, so I trust my compass is still leading me in the right direction. I kept thinking about the sounds as I walked. I know I'm only freaking myself out by focusing on it, but there's just something strange about how the leaves rustle here. I don't know how to describe it, but I'm starting to seriously worry about an encounter with whatever animal it might be. Though if it's actually a person who's messing with me, then it'll be entirely their fault if they push me to fire a shot at their sorry ass. Anyways, tomorrow's entries will at least be written from the quiet comfort of the graveyard. Entry 6, 25th of October, so it's the next morning. Didn't hear anything last night, setting out now. Oh shit, I should stop playing with my chainmail. <laughs> Entry 7, 25th of October. I'm seriously confused. After writing the previous entry this morning, I hiked in the direction the village should be in. It should have only taken a couple hours, but somehow I can't find it. There's nothing but forest. It's been five hours now and I'm afraid I've gotten lost, but how the hell could that have happened? I've had no problems with my navigation so far, no signs of straying from the right direction. I honestly don't know how I fucked it up like this. And the worst part is, the noises in the leaves are louder than ever. I actually think I've figured out what the sound is, but I'm gonna sound insane saying it. Fuck it. It's the sound of footsteps, just slightly offset from my own. Every time I walk forward, I hear the sound echoing just behind me. Almost in sync, but off just enough that I notice it. I tried over and over to convince myself it was some animal or a trick of the ear, but it just keeps happening. The sound is following me, and no matter where I look, no matter how quickly I turn to try and see who or what is fucking with me, I can't find anything. I even tried unloading a few shots into the underbrush and leaves, but it did nothing. I don't know why this is happening. My only choice now is to turn around and follow my waymarks to get back onto the trail. My grave-related business isn't more important than avoiding dying in the woods, be it from exposure or whatever the fuck is following me. <sighs> Breathing break. <laughs> He's doing a good job. <sighs> This would be the moment in the story where I yell out, I have a gun and I'll use it, yeah. This guy just started firing with no warning. <laughs> okay. Entry 8th, 25th of October. Same day as previous entry. Fuck, it's getting dark again, so I had to set up camp. I'm so utterly screwed. I was able to follow my waymarks back for a couple hours, but then they suddenly stopped appearing. This is actually impossible. I was going in the exact correct direction to follow them, but somehow they're gone. I don't know what I should do. I could stay put, but I'll run out of supplies soon. I've almost been out here for as long as I had expected the entire trip to take, 
And here I am, never having even made it to my damn destination in the first place. I need to rest. I can think of a better plan in the morning. Entry 9. 26? Question mark? Of October. Almost I'm today. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was like, wow, it's like, it's today. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I'm lost. Something happened last night, and now I'm hopelessly lost. As soon as I finished writing my last entry, before I could even settle down for the night, I heard the footsteps again. They were happening independently, without the need of my own steps this time. I just sat there as the invisible thing started pacing at the edge of my camp. I was too scared to move, and I tried to just sit in silence and wait for it to stop. But it didn't stop, it got louder, closer. Once the steps were coming directly at me, I got this instinctual kick to run away. Somehow I managed to keep a hold of this journal as I bolted, but all my other supplies were left behind with the campsite. I ran through the dark woods, stumbling on branches and slamming my way through brush, but the footsteps only got closer. They became so loud and close that it felt like they were completely surrounding me, trapping me like a hunted animal. At some point I fell and completely wiped out. But all I can remember is the footsteps roaring in my ears at an unbearable intensity. Then I must have blacked out. I woke up not long ago with the sunrise. And now? The forest is silent. No footsteps, no wildlife, nothing. When I walk, I no longer hear the double footsteps. But I have no idea where I am. No idea where to go. I have no supplies, nothing with which to survive for any length of time. I have to try and find my campsite. I know you're only- I know you're supposed to stay in one place when you're lost, but that's only if there's people searching for you. I never told anyone about this trip for obvious reasons. No one knows I'm out here. Entry 10. Question mark. Day of October. I've been walking for a long time. No sign of my camp, no sign of the village. My legs ache, but for some reason I don't feel hungry or thirsty. The trees are so dense here I can't see the sun, and there's a weird haze when I try to look into the distance. But somehow the dim level of light hasn't changed at all. Like nightfall won't come. Entry 11. Unknown day of October. I didn't think I could get any more confused, but here I am. I found the graveyard. Only it's just a graveyard. No village, no roads or other ruins. Just broken stone walls and a couple dozen worn gravestones. I ran up to it, so relieved to finally find something human after roaming among the endless trees for who knows how many days now. But as soon as I got close, a terrible dread filled me. It was a sense of foreboding, foreboding, so strong that my stomach started churning and I was stopped in my tracks. I looked out at the graveyard to see if there was any threat or creature there to cause this feeling, but I saw nothing between the graves. It was just a silent, old plot of buried bodies. The tombstones themselves are too worn to even read. I tried a few times to walk into the graveyard itself, but at each attempt my body was overcome with such with such fear that I couldn't take a single step forward. Something is wrong with this place, clearly, but I can't even bring myself to feel surprised. It's not any worse than the other things that have happened to me on this horrible execution of an expedition. Currently, I've been ling lingering outside the graveyard walls for a while now, but the dread is eating away at me. I don't think I'll be able to withstand staying here much longer, but my only other option is the empty forest. I'm not eager to return to it, it feels like there's not a single other living thing out there, just me and my lonely, noisy footsteps through the leaves. I thought the graveyard could offer me at least the comfort of sitting with the dead, but it seems like they don't want my company. Not hard to imagine why. I almost wish the invisible creature that got me into this mess in the first place would come back. Entry 12. Unknown day, unknown month. Can't stand it anymore. Need to get away from the graveyard going back into the woods. Maybe I'll find another strange place where I'll at least suffer in a new way. Entry 13. Unknown day, unknown month. There's nothing. Nothing but trees. All the same, all silent. Time doesn't pass. My body doesn't change. The only thing deteriorating is my mind. Found the graveyard again once and got that same terrible feeling. I just want to go home or go anywhere that isn't surrounded by these damn trees. Uh, and then there's, I don't know, an aside that's like, <laughs> entries stop being numbered at this point. There are many dozens of entries that are all variations of, I'm trapped in this forest, fuck these trees, and other incoherent ramblings. The entries become less legible as the pages go on. 
Entry question mark, question mark, question mark. This is it. The last page. Once I don't have anything to write in, I believe I'll truly go insane. But I've been thinking, haven't I just become the same as the invisible thing that brought me here all those months? Crossed out years, crossed out question marks ago? And where is it now? I haven't heard a single hint of it since that night it chased me. Did it somehow swap places with me? If that thing was able to find me and swap places, then I should be able to do the same. I'm sure of it. I just need to find someone. Maybe they have to be off the trail like I was, to step into the territory that overlaps with this endless dimension. I don't know how I would do it, or what would even happen to me, but anything is better than this hell. I'm leaving the- I'm leaving the notebook here, at the graveyard, this fucking place where even death refuses me. I pray my idea works. If not to take me back to my world, then to at least grant me a permanent escape from this existence. Then there's a line to separate the journal entries, and a final piece of narration that says, You've reached the end of the journal. Dread gnaws at your gut. The end. Ooh, spooky! Wow, I love it. That's crazy. Yeah, he... I I like stuck in the wood mention. <laughs> Slender man. <laughs> I like the journal style. I think that's very, yeah. like, it's like a fun way to show the passage of time, but like concisely. <laughs> right, yeah, I was like, I didn't really want it to be just like a full narration thing. But also, if you notice, at the very beginning of the story, you found this notebook on a graveyard's wall. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> whoa, shit. Now you're the one stuck, because I guess he successfully swapped places with you or something. Woohoo! Woo <laughs> Thought he was going to see his own grave at the graveyard. Yeah. There was... I wasn't sure what to do with the graveyard symbolism, but I think it's like death rejecting him and being like, you desecrate the graves of the dead. Yeah. You will be cursed to, to be trapped in this purgatory. <laughs> yeah, like, graveyards are kind of like finality. And it's like a, yeah. a, an inability to find finality. It's cool. I'm down. I will, I'll take your book. I'll publish it. I'm a publisher now. Can you imagine you. if I got to a point where I was a publisher and this became like a thing to see if I'll publish your book? Like, publish your story? That would be, be wild. If I become rich... If I become, like, one of those stupid YouTube billionaires, that's what I would do. I would just start publishing random shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. You'd be like Blumhouse. <laughs> I'd be just like Blumhouse. It would be wild. Um, okay, I think there's only one more story left. And it is another story written by yours truly. Um... Try to get you published a DD adventure book. I would love to publish anything. Anything I would love to write. Maybe one of everything. I'll write a poetry <laughs> book, I'll write a novel, science paper, DD adventure book. <laughs> uh, okay, so I I kind of threw a name out there because I couldn't think of one, so I called it Lil EP. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I didn't put um, a content warning on it, but the realistic content warning is there's also swearing in it. Um, wow. So I, I'm just like Evelyn. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking of like your mom listening, and I'm like, she, she'll be like, why did Evelyn swear so much? Because <laughs> it's <laughs> <content> literature. <warning. laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, mine, also, I'm not gonna lie, this isn't very spooky. I just wrote something and was like, that's fine. Um, anyway, I'll drink some water, take a second. Hyping it up. Hyping it up. Lil Evie. <laughs> I can't say that on a straight face. Rapper name. Yo, I'm Lil Evie. Falls asleep. <laughs> <laughs> After a long night, I finally make it back home. An hour-long subway ride doesn't seem like it would take too much out of you until you're headed back after 10 hours of working and an early morning. I put my bag down, assess the small space I have for living, deciding whether or not it would be worth it to take the time to make food before I succumb to the weariness I feel in every ounce of my being. I weigh the option heavily before deciding that it's just better to pass out as soon as I can. As I get ready for bed, I think back to the past few weeks. 
I've noticed that I haven't been sleeping very well, which has led my body to grow more and more tired as the sleep deprivation catches up. Here's to another attempt at a full night's rest, and I can't say that I'm not looking forward to it. I'm so tired. There has to be a point where I can be so tired that I just fall asleep and stay asleep until I'm rested, right? I finish my face washing routine and tie my hair up, quickly settling down into the covers and closing my eyes. Sleep comes quickly, that was never really the issue. It was about staying asleep. I drift off, immediately into dreams of an abstract collection of my thoughts and daily occurrences. I'm at school, talking with friends I haven't seen in a decade. Then I find myself having tea with the Fellowship of the Ring, as is normal in my dream logic. <laughs> then suddenly I dropped. I feel it suddenly and quickly, knowing that my body must have flexed with the force of it too. Near instantaneously, I feel my body and mind seize with an uncontrollable fear that has come to be familiar. This is the nightmare. I flinch and twitch running through every awful thing that one is subjected to within one's own mind. Pain, fear, hiding, failure, loss, devastation. As much as I try to escape, I feel myself being pulled even further into the dark depths of the nightmare. Losing body parts, being brutally attacked, being forced to attack others. I get the same sense that I'm struggling to breathe, but whether it is a part of the dream or a reaction from my physical body is anyone's guess. The loop continues and continues and continues until I find myself falling again. This time, I fall out of the dream. Finding myself sitting bolt upright in my bed, eyes tight with fear, searching the darkness of the room around me. Everything is as it should be. Except... I look down to the weight that I feel in my lap. I'm used to living with cats, so the sensation didn't strike me as odd until I was awake enough to realize that I don't have a cat, so the strange weight that curled up in my lap was something to be very alarmed by. In another sudden jerky motion, I rip the comforter from myself, launching the dark weight from my lap off to the foot of the bed while I scramble in the opposite direction. I feel my chest heaving with the combined stress of the nightmare and the realization that I'm not alone, the frantic pulling of breath becoming painful. I'm torn about what to do. I want to turn on the light to see what this thing is, but I also don't want to get near it. I look in the darkness to the other side of the room where the light switch lays teasingly on the wall. In the few minutes I had between flinging the creature and contemplating my next step, the little thing unfurled itself. I could hardly see in the darkness of the room, but as the thing grew to its full shape, I could see even less, as if the thing were made of darkness itself. The longer I tried to stare at it, the more of its shape and silhouette I could understand. It was kind of like a little person, <laughs> though it had a pair of small wings and a long forked tail, like an imp, but an imp that would have been described by a cartoon artist? The thought almost made me want to laugh, as inappropriate as that would be. I curl up by my pillows as the last things, or as the thing stretches its little arms above its head and yawns, as if I hadn't just flung the thing away. When it turns to me, I am met with an unsettling pair of yellow eyes that absolutely beam out of the darkness. I feel my full body release a sheen of sweat instantaneously, my skin itching at the sensation. In a more cat-like behavior, the imp cocks its head to the side as if it were considering something. I stare, unsure of what or how to respond to such a thing. We both stare at one another, unmoving. In a moment of foolhardiness, I try to compose myself to sit up. The imp does nothing to move closer, but copies me by sitting down with crossed legs. I watch it for a moment, waiting for it to do or say something, but it does not. It just sits there with its lamp-like eyes watching. Hey, little guy, I start. The imp moves one of its tiny arms in a wave, so it seems it can understand me, I think to myself. What are you, and uh, why are you in my bed? The imp cocks its head to the side and looks away, which made it look like it was thinking. I am... me, it started, its voice less of a thing that emanated from its body and more of a whisper that entered the back of my mind. I was... asleep. I nod, but am admittedly disappointed by the answer. But who are you, and why are you sleeping here, I ask, a little upset but still very frightened. I try to relax the muscles in my body, tensing every time I felt the little lamp-like eyes focus on me. Again, the imp took a moment to think before seemingly staring into my soul again. I am you. We are tired. I nod again, although the vague answers are doing nothing to help me feel more comfortable in the situation. 
At the mention of being tired, I flicked my gaze over to one of the only illuminated sources in my apartment, the digital clock on my oven. According to the time read there, it was only 5.23 a.m. I had only been able to sleep for about four hours. I can't help but let out the frustrated sigh as my head falls into my hands in defeat. I just want to get a full night's sleep. Hell, I'd settle for just being able to get five hours in without jolting awake from a nightmare. I hadn't even been able to have successful naps in the past few weeks without the nightmares. Then suddenly, I felt a little hand on my own. My head shoots up and I am face to face with the bright lamp eyes of the imp. I jump again, though my back was practically against the wall to begin with, leaving no room for movement. A little scream accompanies my jump, but that does not deter the little thing in the slightest. Once I am settled somewhat, it places its little hand on my knee as if it were trying to comfort me. I take a few deep breaths to try to control my out of control heart rate as I look down to the strange little thing. It's looking at me expectantly, but I have no idea how to respond to it. What? Do you want something? The little creature looked up at me before it crawled cat-like into my lap again. I could feel the ten- I could feel the tenseness of my body loosen a bit at the confusion I felt by the creature's strange actions. For all intents and purposes, it did seem like it was just a sleepy little guy who wanted to cuddle up and nap, but I couldn't get out of my head that I had no idea what this thing was. Lots of little dangerous things wanted to cuddle up cozy beforehand, like parasites and probably some other type of thing. I tentatively placed my hand over its curled up body, actively ignoring the yellow gaze it seemed to be boring into me. I made contact with the body of the creature and was kind of surprised to be met with resistance like it was a physical thing. It seemed kind of see-through while sitting on my lap. I could see the print of my pajama bottoms through the creature's body, so I wasn't sure if it would feel solid. The second surprise was that, was that the sensation of the thing's body was warm to the touch. It felt like soft warm skin like petting a hairless cat. As I held my hand over its little body, I could feel the subtle rise and fall of its breathing. I was drawn back to the imp's face when it closed its frightening eyes and turned its head to lay down to rest, curling its tail around its body and folding its wings in. And just like that, I was sitting in my bed with a strange imp curled up asleep at 5.36 a.m. Feeling the adre adrenaline of fear wearing off and the overwhelming exhaustion return, I shuffled down so that I could take my place in bed again. The imp had said that it was sleepy, and lord knows I was too. I also didn't have the brain power to come up with a better idea, so I got in place, pulled the comforter back up, picked up the imp, which didn't seem too upset by... Uh... It... <laughs> To which it didn't seem too upset by, it just looked up at me curiously, and placed it on the comforter a bit away from me. I was still a little weary about having this strange creature sleep with me in bed, but hey, this could still this could all be a dream, so why not just let it play out? The imp settled down into its place and fell asleep again. I tried too, but always after as always after waking from a nightmare, I lay there and struggled to fall back asleep. I stared at the dark ceiling while thinking about the little creature. And then my eyes opened. The room was full of light, and judging by the sunlight from the window, it seemed like that it was a little bit past midday. I quickly looked around for the imp, but there was no sign it was ever there. A little relieved, I take a deep breath and fall back onto the bed. What a rough night, I think to myself, as I feel my entire body strained from my muscles clenched in fear. The imp was a strange new concept to my nightmares, but I was a little relieved that it wasn't around anymore. It wasn't real, right? Dreams and nightmares always felt the most real in the moments just after waking up, so I thought that so I thought that was what I was experiencing. I looked at my apartment in the light of the new day, feeling a bit more hopeful about my future sleep. A few more weeks went by with an average to slightly above average amounts of sleep. I couldn't be happier at the results. My body felt better, my thoughts more alert. Really getting the appropriate amount of sleep is so refreshing after going without for so long. It was on the uh, it was on another such day when I was getting ready for bed. My mug of sleepy time tea had been finished and I was bundled up in the covers ready for the next day to come. When my dreams dropped into that uncomfortable but familiar realm of nightmares. The first layer was mundane, missing an important meeting, imagined disputes with friends and family. The mundane layer very quickly fell into the deeper, darker layer of nightmares. I found myself again trudging through the old ideas that haunt me. Trapped on a sinking cruise ship, on an airplane that's crashing, being forced to perform a surgery I don't know on myself. Flashes of these moments amalgamate into one terrible, ever-changing scene I can't escape from. 
At some point in the horror, I fall. Right into my bed, sitting bolt upright. I feel my body pulling breath into itself haphazardly and my skin is, a, is in a sheen of fear-induced sweat. I sigh, disappointed at the idea that the moment of regular sleep I had over the past few weeks was just that, a brief moment of change. I take a look at the digital clock and see that it reads 3.48 a.m. So even less sleep than usual. I lift the comforter to go make myself some tea or something because I still feel like I can salvage the night when I find the imp. Curled up next to me, asleep as ever, is the strange little creature I've encountered before. The sight of it gave me pause before I tentatively put a hand out to touch its curled back. Again, I was met with a sensation of touching warm skin. At the touch, the little head of the creature turned to face me and I was once again met with its strange stare. I regarded it again, subconsciously stroking its back like a cat. You're back, huh? The little thing nodded its head, turning its body to get more back scratches. The gesture made me laugh a little at the ridiculousness of the situation. My body was coming down from the terror of the nightmare far faster than it had last time I encountered the imp, which was a bit of a relief. I had a meeting to get to in the Upper West Side tomorrow in the morning, so I'd take any sleep I can get. The little imp seemed content to stay where it was, though I wasn't so sure I wanted it to sleep under the covers with me. I pulled one of the pillows that had been pushed to the wayside in my sleep and sat it down on the bed to my side below my hip. With that in place, I scooped up the imp, who still seemed rather unbothered by being manhandled, and sat it back down on the pillow for it to go back to sleep. The little thing did so, curling up as it liked to do. And I, as I watched it go back to sleep, I realized that it might be cold in my apartment, with it seemingly just having bare skin to protect it. I pulled a corner of the throw blanket I had and covered the little naked body next to me. It seemed to be, appreciate that and fell back to sleep. I too tried to fall asleep again, which was far more successful than it usually was when I woke from my nightmares. The next thing I knew, it was nearly 5pm the next day. I sat in my bed staring at the clock unbelievingly. I had confirmed it with my phone time, but I was still shocked. I had been asleep for 13 hours? In some ways, I was relieved that I was able to sleep so long interrupted, but I was also feeling empty and scared that I had somehow slept through my five alarms and an entire day's worth of traffic noise. I began, to qu I began quickly responding to the flood of where are you messages and emails I had received from today before something caught my eye. The little pillow bed situation I had set up for the imp was still there. So either my night terrors were getting very domestic at my age, or I had seen some creature that I interacted with last night. I didn't dwell on it too much as I worked to smooth over the day that I had missed by sleeping through it. The next time I ran into another window of nightmares was at the end of the year. The end of the year for me was always a dearth of deadlines and projects, organizing with seemingly everyone I know, and working around holiday schedules. The nights I found myself actually sleeping were few and far in between, but one of those nights I was met with a familiar drop into a nightmare. The scenes and visions were gruesome and horrifying in the most abstract of ways. Ways that left me breathing hard and crying when I awoke that night with the vague memories of danger and fear. I closed my eyes and dropped my head into my hands to calm down. I know I have to look at the clock. I know I have to know how much I slept, but I'm avoiding it. I raise my head as I try to prepare myself for the disappointment waiting for me on the clock. Then I noticed a little lump curled under the corner of the throw pillow, of the th uh, under the corner of the throw on the pillow I had set out. Ever since the last encounter I had with the imp, I had left the little pillow out for it on the chance it came back. And, true to my assumption, the little thing had found its familiar bed and taken, uh, taken to its napping place without fuss. I felt a little relieved at the sight of the imp, but forced myself to look at the clock. 2.14 AM, it read in flickering green lights. The tears that had accompanied my awakening threatened to come back to the surface. I hadn't even been able to sleep for a full hour before I was woken up. In a moment of weariness and sleep deprivation, I began to cry. I sat in the middle of my bed and cried until my face felt numb. Every time I thought I was doing something okay, I thought I was doing better, I'd have some instance where my sleep schedule would fuck me up. This was a problem I couldn't really blame anyone for, although I had felt like the world was out to get me. I was distracted from my despair when I felt a pair of little warm hands on my knee. I looked down at the lamp eyes of the imp, its head cocked to the side in confusion. I gave a defeated sigh and fell back onto the bed, feeling every ounce of tired that I had from before I could sleep. 
The imp took this as an invitation to climb up onto my body, sitting on my chest and looking down. If it were a cat, I could imagine it purring and kneading its paws into my skin, but it just sat, almost as if it had asked a question I couldn't hear. I looked down at the thing on my chest. Hey, little buddy, I say, its eyes, glowing in its eyes glow in recognition. I frown. Have you been bringing me nightmares? Its eyes look off for a moment. Yes, it whispers in the back of my mind. I nod a little bit. I had a suspicion that this little thing was in some way responsible, but the confirmation made me sad. The little creature didn't seem malicious, it just seemed like this was an unfortunate side effect to its presence around me. So, why do you keep coming back? I really need to stop having nightmares. The little thing shrinks down into itself a bit. We're friends, it responds in an even quieter voice. I nodded a bit, understanding what the creature meant. I had felt a connection to this creature too, feeling a little warmth in my heart every time I found the thing sleeping by my side, at least after that first encounter. And then I felt myself frown. But I always seem to get a lot of sleep after you visit me, I thought out loud. The creature perked up again and nodded. I want to help, friend, the, whis the whisper asserted. I sat up and took the creature into my hands again, holding it under its armpits while its little body hung there. It seemed very calm as it looked at me intently with those yellow eyes that dominated its face. Let's go to sleep. I think we're both tired, I said, put it, place, eh, pacing it back down on the pillow it had climbed. It seemed happy and curled up again under the throw corner. I lay back down again knowing I was going to get as much sleep as I needed. Sometimes we can't fight what our bodies need to do. The end. Oh. <laughs> I don't that know what that cute. was. Yeah, it's kind of cute. <laughs> yeah, not very scary. Cat nightmare. <laughs> yeah, because I and you um, pull it up like a baby. <laughs> right, I'm just like it's a baby. Why are you giving me nightmares? Yeah, because I I had um a series of like a few weeks like a a in this month and last month where I had like nightmares every night. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is happening? And I was like, oh man. Because usually when I have nightmares, but the cats are there, I wake up and usually there's like a cat and its freaky eyes are reflecting back at you. And I'm always like, that's a comforting thing to me because I know that's my baby. But I'm like, that's kind of a scary thing to see. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, what if it was that? But also you don't have a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Hairless cat. Uh, what a... I felt like I was talking for a long stretch of time. Yeah, reading a story. Yeah, it's talk for a long stretch of time. It's a long stretch of time. Um, yeah. I had a nightmare someone just ran into my place and tried to say it was their Airbnb and I had to fight them. God, that's so scary. <laughs> this is my Airbnb! <laughs> Alright! So, that was all of the stories for this year's Halloween writing showcase. Thank you for everyone who submitted a story. Thank you for everyone who showed up to listen to stories. It's all good in the hood. So a few things are going to happen at this point. We have, um, so Evelyn and I are going to get together and pick the winners and then we will announce them in a moment, but audience participation time. Yeehaw, Ooh. yeehaw. Um, audience participation, we have, we're gonna have you guys pick, just vote, do a poll on which one you liked the best, um, and, you know, there's not really much for winning it, it's just a cool way to gauge whether, what you guys liked, so, these are all the short stories, um, do you have the poll link? Yeah, I'll link it. Alright, she's gonna link the poll, and so while we're deliberating, we will have you guys can deliberate and then we'll be able to check that out and announce that too so um i'm gonna put the music on we'll be back and um yeah catch you guys in a, in a few minutes probably yeah um, <laughs> let me plop this on Oops. among the fields of straw and stone Locked in till the workday's over Time's a gentle stream Longer than it seems 
patient is the night How I long to see her face now Her starry moon will gaze now I know she's never late Still anxiously I wait Patient is the night She's never late, still anxiously I wait. Patient is the night.
No issues. No. We have winners selected for the 2024 uh, Halloween writing wow. showcase. Uh, yeah. So first of all, first of all, I do want to mention that all of our contestants are winners because they're getting stickers. <laughs> You're all yeah. getting these free stickers on my mail to your house, which also includes, uh, you're gonna get an awkward handwritten letter from me, but that's okay. Um, that's not really the prize, it's just like an uncomfortable, um, side effect. Um, so there's that. And, um, yeah, Evelyn, are, can you see the poll results? Uh, let me check. Are there poll results? Wow. <laughs> yeah, I can see the poll results. They were... <laughs> Oh, there's four votes. Oh, I'm getting live results. People are voting right Ooh, now. Okay. okay, I was gonna say, I'm like, do we want to announce the the prizes we picked and then wait? I think we'll wait as people. Yeah, are we can wait voting. a bit. Yeah. So if you want to vote, was a dead tie, but now it's not. <laughs> if you want to vote on the audience participation thing, what was the fan fave? You guys can vote now. The link is in the chat. Um. All right. So. We have three prizes to award today, and the first prize we'll award is the best of the two sentence horror stories, um, which goes to the story entitled He Smiles by Mercury Mercury. Yay! <laughs> he was the only one in that group, but also it was a good story. I, I feel yeah. a little... It's it's not like a pity thing, I, I assure you. <laughs> so, which means Mercury Mercury is entitled to any tote bag on the merch store. Um, on beside the uh, stickers, he's also gonna get a tote bag, so that's exciting. Yay! Ooh. Um, so for the short story category, our runner-up prize is gonna go to. Ba, 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 ba. Asterian's Horrible No Good Very Bad Day by Car Flug! <laughs> Woo! So the runner up prize for the short story con category is also any tote bag off the merch store. I will send a survey out, you guys can pick it. So yeah, tote bags, tote bags. We've got Halloween tote bags, we have D&D &D tote bags, we have Gretel. <laughs> <laughs> He's Gretty. here to celebrate his victory. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, good sir, for writing Asterian <laughs> fan fiction. We are the same. <laughs> um, okay. Open door, thrall. <laughs> thrall. And for the grand prize, the best in show for the short story category, which is going to be anything on the merch store. You can pick any one thing on the merch store and we will send it to you. Is the story New Employee by Arfi? Yatta! Omedetto! Okay. So, <laughs> so, yeah! That's Yay. good. I will be, so for the winners, I will be sending out, I'll be in correspondence with you about um, getting prize stuff set up. So be ready for that. I'll probably send out a Google form type of thing. Um, but yeah, that was, those are our winners. Thank you so much. I think all of it was really fun and exciting. You would like a new car, but alas, I'm not a dealer of cars. <laughs> I could write you a story about a car or maybe get you a sticker of a car, but that's about as much as I can do. I'm like a limited genie. <laughs> I'll just write a story about you winning a car. That's what you get. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be like, it was the best car his eyes had ever laid on. Um. But, anyway, sticker that says new car. Kirkland Genie. I am a Kirkland Genie. That's pretty much me. I'm limited to uh, 2D images and writing. <laughs> uh, so, how does our uh, particip or audience pick poll look? Alright. So, yeah, we have five votes in the poll and <laughs> the the ones that are not winners are there's one vote for little ep that <laughs> was my vote um there's, 
One vote for my story. Woohoo, backpacking. Woo. There's one vote for new employee by Arfi. But the winner is Asterian's horrible, no good, very bad day. Whoa! Audience pick. Woo Audience pick for Asterian. <laughs> Asterian is a fan favorite through and through. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's got that star power. <laughs> I guess write about notable licensed characters. Um, oh god, he's back to celebrate again. <laughs> Gritty! <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> this makes up for all the bad things that happened this week. We are uh, the best writers. JK Rowling, watch out. We don't normally have the writers chime in on the show, but you know, there's a first time for everything. Here's to year three. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you're not allowed to talk, but that's okay. <laughs> what are rules? I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I think that's gonna wrap us up for this Halloween writing showcase season. But if you guys liked this and thought it was interesting. I will recommend that you join the Discord. Um, here's my link. Yeah, I will recommend that you join the Discord because we have not only this year's entries, but the past two years of entries all on the Discord and the showcase submissions. If you want to scroll back through time, you can read everything we've ever written. Um, we have past show. We only have the past one showcase also on YouTube. If you want to watch on YouTube, this one will also be going onto YouTube as well. Um, there's my YouTube link. I have forgot I had that in there, but um, you can go to YouTube, you can watch the past ones, you can watch some other stuff. Um, I have a Halloween video that I'm supposed to be posting soon. Ooh. Ooh. It's very exciting! Um, Yay. <laughs> guess who's in it? Jaffa's in it. Um, wow. And if you like Jaffa, because who doesn't love Jaffa, you could, I would heavily recommend, in fact, demand that you go follow her on <laughs> twitch.com. Twitch.tv. Um, yeah, I want to play games. I'm going to play a game, guys. It's she's going to play a game. She streams randomly, but it's like a beautiful sighting in the wild, like a rainbow. And we love it. We all want to see the double rainbow that is Evelyn streaming. And so, yeah, hunt down her YouTube. She's around. <laughs> she does internet. We do pretty much the same internet, but she does it sneakily. What? <laughs> she does it sneakily. <laughs> Play a game, can have some people in high keys inside their bodies. Yeah. Oh, I think you could be a good jigsaw. Starting with you? <laughs> yeah. He's right there. Just catch him. <laughs> He's taking naps all the time. True. You just, like, cut into him, put a key in there, wake him up with a loud noise on the TV, and you're like, I'd like to play a game. <laughs> I already have a key in my body. Second key. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Trick key. He stole your Oreos. He did steal he your Oreos. He was eating my poisoned Oreos. <laughs> Much to his detriment. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we are- we will be holding another Halloween writing showcase next year. Um, this is something I'm probably gonna be doing for as long as I can, baby. I don't even care who shows up. Um, so yeah, if you want to do this in the future, again, it's super easy to join. It's just by being on the Discord, really. Um, and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, horror stories are welcome. I encourage everyone to do creative writing and try it out. And um, my one challenge would be write a two cents horror story and then just try writing one. They're very addictive. Like, like, and that sounds crazy, but almost everyone who's written one is like, oh, I wrote the first one. And then I came up with ideas for more. So like, try writing one, one two sentence horror story and, be, and See if you don't get addicted See to it. See if you don't get addicted to it. <laughs> Learning is cool. Reading is fun. I feel like I'm a poster in a library in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's it for us. Um, drink water and eat food to sustain your human form. If you want to submit spell points to whatever the community challenge is, you can do that too. Um, I'll be back for regular stream on Monday. I'll be there on Monday. I'll be there on Wednesday. I'll probably not be there on Thursday because that's Halloween, kiddos. 
And uh, I'm gonna go do something crazy. I think I'm gonna go to Sleepy Hollow. I think I've decided I'm going to Sleepy Hollow for Halloween and just see oh, what's really? over there. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah! Um, but that's it. We'll be back. Um, stuff is happening. Be safe on Halloween. Drink good water and eat lots of candy. <laughs> Summon as many ghosts as possible. Make sure they're all attached to you for life. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta trap them ghosts. Yeah, yeah so, so you'll have lots of friends when you die. Yeah, you'll, you'll be like, like gotcha, bitch. Bossy. Yeah. <laughs> Drink candy, eat water. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Um, Yep, that's pretty much it for us. We'll be back at some point together, and we love you. Or we don't. Who knows? Trick or treat, bitch. <laughs> <laughs>